So I really have no set train of thought of how I'm about to say what I'm going to say. Um, I'm going to just try to speak truthfully and honestly from the heart. Um, a couple days ago was Mother's Day, my very first Mother's Day. Um, I'm about seven weeks postpartum and um, you know, it, it really hit me, it really hit me what it was to be a mother. All the things that I was experiencing, I remember going out to brunch and seeing all these other mothers with their kids, different ages, and thinking to myself, all these people went through a journey to get to wherever they were at with their child. Every woman that I saw, every mother that I saw. And it made me feel a little bit more relaxed in knowing that everybody's been on a journey, the same journey I'm now going on. Um, I wanted this blog to be uh, called It's Time to Tell the Truth because I feel like there's not a lot of truth being told amongst women and especially women in the public eye and in the media about what it's like to have a baby and be a woman, a working woman and a woman trying to find herself and find her place in this world and voice and um, and then having to be a mother at the same time. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to share my birth story and I was really, really reluctant, truthfully, to share it because I was, um, I was a bit scared to be that vulnerable to share how real it got for me during my labor and scared of what people would think and what people would say and how they would compare me to other people and um, other women and I, I had to process. I needed to take the time to process exactly what happened. Um, and so here's what happened. Uh, my due date was March 9th. I was five days overdue. Um, I went into labor on early morning of the 14th and I was at home. I had prepared to have a doula and my OBGYN. I planned to deliver at the hospital. Um, I was more than ready and willing to deliver at home. Um, you know, I, I fully believe in the power and the um, strength and the history and the dynamic and the design of a woman's body uh, to deliver and have a baby very naturally, very easily, um, obviously with some pain, but um, I believe that that was going to be for me. Jared um, was very adamant about wanting a hospital birth and of course 2016 medical intervention if in in any case something goes wrong let's be at a hospital. I was totally on board with that as well. So my water broke. Um, I went into early labor on the 14th or I went into labor early on the 14th and um, I called my doula and I said hey contractions are coming, contractions are coming, contractions are coming. Um, my contractions went from a span of lasting a minute every 10 minutes to every five minutes, every three minutes, every two minutes apart um, for within the span of an hour and a half. So I labored very, very quickly and I was dilating very quickly. By the time I got to the hospital, I was already six centimeters um, on my own. Yay! I was doing great. Uh, got up to seven at the hospital. They checked me. I kept feeling like, of course, the pain, kept feeling the contractions. At one point, my contractions were so bad, I was experiencing triples. So contractions lasting a minute and a half in triples with maybe a 10 second break in between. So I was experiencing contractions for a solid five minutes, which was excruciating. I'm not even gonna mince words about it. It was excruciating. Um, but they checked me and said I was nine centimeters, so I was on it. I was like, let's do this, let's have this baby, let's go. Everyone was like, you're gonna have your baby by noon. It was early in the morning. You're gonna have your baby by noon, this is wonderful. And I was like, let's go, I don't care about the pain. Tell me when it's time to push. Um, when they checked me again, uh, I was experiencing some swelling. As you guys knew from previous blogs, I had experienced very, very, crazy swelling in the last trimester of my pregnancy. I had developed edema. Um, I also mentioned this on my Instagram that some women develop preeclampsia, which is a condition um, that causes high blood pressure and swelling in your pregnancy. I did not have that. I had edema. Uh, but when I got to the hospital, I started swelling even more 
and they noticed that my blood pressure was going up, so they wanted to check me again. At that point, they told me that I was back at seven centimeters. Uh, I was devastated to say the least because I felt like I was right there at the finish line and they told me that I had gone back. Um, not to mention that my blood pressure continued to go up and my swelling continued to get worse. Um, they were really, really concerned for me. They started to run tests and it turned out that I developed preeclampsia during my labor, which is very, very rare um, and very, very scary. I, uh, they started talking C-section immediately and I was like, absolutely not. I don't want a C-section. I will labor here until 45 hours if I have to, to get this baby out. Um, I just kept asking if Cameron was okay, how were his levels? And they just kept saying, he's a superstar. His levels are great. You don't have anything to be worried about. He is great. Um, I, on the other hand, was falling apart and didn't know it. Uh, I kept seeing my doctors come in and out. I had the nurses, Jared, my best friend. Um, my doula, and they kind of just kept telling me, Melanie, you need to rest, you need to rest. Um, so they gave me an epidural, which I did not have until that point, and I did not plan on having, nor did I want. Um, but the only way I was gonna be able to um, get Cameron out was to have this epidural to rest my body, which was under high stress, high blood pressure, and um, it also was revealed that he was posterior, so he was facing the wrong direction. Even though his head was down, he was facing the wrong direction. And so they needed me to rest and lay on my side so that I could get him to turn. Uh, longer story short, I was feeling good. <laughs> An epidural had me feeling manageable, pain management. Um, you know, I could still feel the pressure, which was what was really important to me, and I figured as long as I could rest, then I would be ready to push after a certain amount of time. Um, again, didn't go according to plan. Uh, they came in and told me that I was still at seven centimeters nine hours later. So they then had to start having the conversation with me about a C-section again. And my blood pressure at this point was skyrocketing, almost at like 190 over 110, which is pre-stroke levels. And if you allow preeclampsia to develop it can develop into eclampsia, which causes seizures. Um, 190 over 110 is stroke levels. And little did I know they were having a conversation. Everybody on my team was having a conversation about how to tell me to do this. And um, it just came to a point where Jared had to come in one on one and look at me and take my hand and look me in the eyes and say, um, I have to leave the hospital with both of you. And until that moment, I did not recognize how real and severe my situation was. I had never even thought um, that I would find myself in that position. I had prepared throughout my whole labor uh, or my whole pregnancy, eating right, going to yoga, um, thinking I was doing all the right things to have this baby and the best way, the most natural way, the most healthy way possible, only to get to the hospital and then have them tell me the th one thing I did not want was to have a C-section. And um, I was terrified. I'd never had surgery. I'd never been admitted to a hospital. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know what that process was going to be like. And it was really, really terrifying. But my partner, the love of my life, decided for me that it was important for me. And that's what a good partner should do in, that, in a crisis is make a decision that's best for you and obviously best for the baby. Um, you know, in retrospect, I realized that I was already a mother, that I would have risked my life um, for Cameron's, really, in retrospect. So I uh, had the C-section. He was born at 7.39 p.m. Healthy, beautiful, big, 22 inches, 9 pounds. Um, poor thing. <laughs> of course, he couldn't turn. I'm, like, super small, and he's super big, and he couldn't turn. And... Um, and it was, you know, it could have been difficult on us both, but uh, by making the decision to have a C-section, it was the best thing for both of us. Um, Post-baby, that was a whole other set of emotions that I was not prepared for. Um, I had gone through nine months of, you know, I'm trying to stay active and healthy and doing everything right. Um, 
only to then have to have major abdominal surgery and have to then not be able to jump back into the life that I thought I was going to be able to jump back into. Not even being able to get up when I want to to take care of my newborn. Um, I'm so thankful that I have a partner in this relationship, in this family that was present and there for me 24-7, there for us 24-7. Um, when I couldn't get up out of the bed, um, when breastfeeding got difficult in the beginning, and I'll do a whole other video blog about breastfeeding because that is a whole journey in itself for, for us women. I will be happy to share everything um, that I've learned in that process. But like I said, I'm so thankful to have Jared be the amazing partner in that time while I was healing and needed help and needed help healing. Um, and that was a whole other mind trip for me because I was ready. I was so ready for that swelling to go down and, you know, to, to jump back in and be a mom and get my life going and get back into my career and do everything ready. And life just kind of said, hold on, you got to wait a little bit longer. You got to take a little bit more time. You got to ease into this and let go again. Um, and then... I would say the hormones and what most women experience postpartum depression. Um, I wouldn't say that I was as far as depressed, but I was really trying to um, understand what happened. And it didn't hit me until I came home from the hospital and I was home with my baby and I was looking at him and there was almost a moment of numbness where you feel like, I felt like someone gave him to me and was like, here, Here's, here's this baby, take care of it. And I was like, okay, I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. Um, I was disconnected um, from the whole process because it just happened until I sat down and really had to process what happened. And I had to deal with feelings of disappointment and feeling like a failure. And um, that sounds crazy. That sounds so crazy because how could I even look at this beautiful child and feel like I failed? I felt like my body failed me. And I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared to, um, I wasn't prepared to, to feel that way after, after having a child. And it was really, really difficult. And I cried and I'm still crying about it because it's taken me, it's still taking me time to process who I am now and who I'm becoming. And um, I just think that that's something that we don't talk about enough. And I've been trying to deal with that for the last six, seven weeks. Now finally getting the okay for my doctor to say, hey, you can start to ease back into the life you once had working out and you know, being active again. And, and my body, what my body had to go through to bring this child into this world um such a shock such a change um i'm looking at myself now with completely new eyes trying to understand who i am what is this new body who is this new woman who is this new mother and um every day i just try to be honest with myself and i try to forgive myself and be patient um and i look at my beautiful son and i don't regret any of it I don't regret a thing. I would do it all over again. The pain, the stretch marks, the imperfect scenarios that, you know, I thought were going to work out perfectly because I thought I did everything right. And if there's one thing I can say that I learned clearly throughout my whole pregnancy is the feeling and the word, the true meaning of having to surrender. Surrender to everything I thought that I knew, everything I was expecting. Um, you know, I had read about back labor. I had read about posterior babies. I had read about preeclampsia during labor. I never thought those things would happen to me. I never knew they could. I never thought they would. Um, and no one prepared me for that. No one prepared me for the what if scenario. No one prepared me for the just in case someone comes to you in the height peak of the most momentous physical, emotional, and spiritual thing a woman can go through and labor and then say, hey, it's not gonna go as planned. Here's plan B for you, which you have not prepared for. Um, and it's been, 
it's been a, a tough thing to process. And the only way I felt like I could actually make sense of it all was to be honest, was to tell the truth to you, to myself, to my family, to everyone, um, that it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. And maybe it's not supposed to be. And um, women need to know that you have to talk about it. You have to be willing to share. The few moms that I've spoken to since I've had Cameron and shared experiences with have blown my mind, have really just allowed me to feel a little bit more not isolated because that's how you feel after you have a baby. You feel isolated, like no one else in the world understands what is going on. Um, I am thrilled about being a mother. Cameron is the most amazing, amazing child, except for when he's hungry. When he's hungry, all bets are off. He will scream the house down and embarrass me anywhere at any time. And that just, again, kudos to all the moms out there because that's what, that's what it is amongst other beautiful and indescribable feelings. Um, but I am on a journey I am on a journey to not go back to who I was. There's so much pressure. There's so much pressure in the media. There's so much pressure in, in our images of women, of what we're supposed to be, the snapback or the, um, the, the well, oh, you better get back to who you were. But I don't want to be who I was. I don't want to be that girl before. That girl before didn't know this life's purpose. That girl before didn't know what it is, the joy to have y your image created looking back at you, showing you all the things that you know about yourself and don't know about yourself. Um, this infinite source of love, I would never trade it for the world. Um, it's by far the greatest thing I've ever done with my life. Um, it's such an overwhelming feeling. And, uh, you know, when it comes back to women and the images and the pressure that we're supposed to feel that we have to undergo uh, when we have a baby, telling the truth, I put on 74 pounds. 74 pounds, that's like carrying around another person. I didn't know how small I was. I didn't know what type of body I had before. I never put so much value on it. Um, until my body changed and then post baby body, I'm looking at myself and being like, I have never seen my body like this. I've never had to really think about losing weight. I've never really had to think about, um, working hard for it. I mean, I've, I've, and that's just my journey. That's just my journey. And I empathize with women more now, more now, women who've had children, women who haven't had children for the fact that we are under so much pressure to look a certain way because of an expectation. And for me specifically being in the public eye, people are expecting me to be something. They're comparing me to the other women in public eyes about how they recovered, but their story is not my story. And I've learned that if I allow myself to compare my story, my journey, my child, my growth and evolution as a woman to any other woman out there to compare it I will be losing the joy that I should be feeling in my process. And that's why I wanted to make this video a blog. That's why I wanted to share my story because I want other women to know that it doesn't matter what anybody else is going through. It doesn't matter what they've been through. You have to be working on what you are going through at all times. I have decided to not release my album right now because I am enjoying being a mother. That is my priority. Um, music is my gifting and I love it, but being a mom is my priority now. That's just it. I wanna be present for the moments when my son opens his eyes in the morning and goes to sleep at night. I wanna be there, I don't wanna miss those moments um, because I'm so busy splintering myself, trying to feed these other people and other things in my life. Um, but I'm feeling so inspired and I don't want to sell myself short. I want to continue to make music and use this new time in my life to inspire me to elevate to the next level of who I am becoming. And I just hope that everybody who has been with me from day one, 
will be with me on this journey um, because it's not just mine. It is yours. It is ours. It is everyone's journey of what it is to evolve as people, as women, as mothers. And um, I'm going to do my best to share with you guys as much as I can uh, from fitness to the things that have worked out for me, just personal stories. Um, you know, I really want to create a community where we feel it's okay to talk about these things and to share. So um, that's the truth. My truth is not your truth. Your truth is your truth. Live in your truth. Be patient with yourself, be kind to yourself, be forgiving of yourself, um, and love yourself. <laughs> love yourself at every stage. I had real moments where I felt awful about myself post-pregnancy, post um, where I looked at myself and did not feel like myself. I felt like I was floating through this new stage of my life, and, um, and it was difficult. But um, I'm feeling a lot better about it now. And I'm feeling like there's strength there again. So thanks for listening. Uh, I'll be doing more of these. And I just hope that uh, you guys gain, learn, grow from it. So uh, 